What's happening? Chat and Ponies back again, episode 23. Um, well, as always, we're sponsored by Flux. They've got some brand new trackies coming out real soon, so I've got one on for you just to model it, just so uh, you all know what's happening. They're coming out the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for them on their Instagram and stuff like that. But today we've got a uh, bell to guest in. We've got Beefy, Liam Beefy Smith. Introduce yourself, lad, obviously, you know what I mean? Yeah, obviously, Liam Smith, um, our boxer. Four, got four brothers, three brothers, four of us all professional fighters, and obviously I'm a former world champion. So <laughs> you can't say much better than that, can you, lad? Former world champion, lad, unbelievable. So I always say, lad, when I get in, when we get started there, how did you get into boxing, lad? What was obviously you've got your brothers and that, but was that no? The well, main for me, thing? It's, no, for me it's different. It's probably <clears throat> probably a bit of a better story than the others. Like I didn't want to box, and that's what I kind of said all the way through. I'd love to have sat when I won a world title. I, I got like the um, the good not published like I got good good plaudits because I was the first Scouts World Champion for twenty odd years since yeah. Conti and um, there'd only been John Conti and Paul Hawkinson before me, which is which is mad because the boxers we produced. I know it's crazy how many boxers have come out of this uh, city. Like, like we had a few fall short, you know what I mean. Obviously, I had two brothers who challenged for titles and fell short, so it was a proper good story for me to just go. Know what I've done to this my whole life, but I hadn't. I had to be in a liar if I said to you know, I've done to this since I was yeah. a kid. I dreamt of playing footy all the way through, didn't want to box. Paul started boxing, Stephen was boxing, Callum started before me. And then it was only when I was about 14, two of my mates started boxing for the Kirkdale. And I knew my brothers all went to each other. So I knew it was kind of, not a rival gym, but it was a gym half a mile down the road. So I thought, you know what, my brothers go to the Tundra, I'm going to go to the Tundra and box you. But even back then, I weren't clued up that one of them was well heavier than me and the other one was probably well lighter than me. Three months in, they did jib boxing and I was having my first fight because I did used to box with them in the house. Yeah. So I took to it quite quick. I did like fighting. I liked fighting on the street and all that. I was always fighting in school and what have you. So that's where, that's how I kind of started. It was not really, oh, I don't want to box. It was my brother's boxed. Every day getting home from school, I used to do my head and all that. Other night, my dad at the moment say, what have you done in the gym? And they, they'd all talk different about what they'd done. And, and you'd just been on the street playing footy. Playing footy. <laughs> I was stand, I'd always knew he was like going outside with a ball and, and whatever else. So you can't just, well, once I got into it then, it did um, it did help me though. Yeah, that's lad. That always makes me laugh, lad. You fight, and the next day you see yeah. you're playing Sunday League footy, lad. It's sick People every time People have always asked me about that. People always baff me. Cause like, it is a mad, it's a mad shout, but... If I could swap my career now for footy, I probably would. Yeah. And it's mad that, but I like, think a nine time, nine out of ten kids in Liverpool would. Yeah, or, footy, like, yeah, yeah they would. Because I think. I do didn't want to be a footy player yeah. when we were growing up, I lad. You know what I mean? Yeah. You looked at Steven Gerrard and Jamie Carrick and you were like, I want to be yeah. him. I want to be him. Kids are doing the same now with Trent and Curtis Jones and that. You're like, yeah. I want to be in the Liverpool yeah, team. Badly, it's just, just what it's like in this city, lad. Everyone wants to be a footy player. The gym I felt me, dog, like, off the street, I was, I was getting up to no good and... Stephen just caught me start. I was about literally about to have a pull of a ciggy, <laughs> and I, I just felt fucking grip me neck. Same round, it was Stephen. He just dragged me home. Just said, just caught him smoking. I was like, I, have, I, I you didn't. I never put it in my mouth. But I was, I was but obviously a bit about to. Yeah, you know what so. I mean? And I just thought. And then you ask my mum, my mum to say, yeah, we moved house because of Liam. Because you were getting us to no yeah, good. She just got me out <laughs> like the area we we're in, like a, from Cakedale. It's obviously, you know, I, I I loved it and I hated moving. Away from there, but but now when you look back, yeah, you think the, it was yeah, a blessing in disguise. The lads I knocked about with and that, like you know, some of them are fucked on the weeds, which some of them are fucking robbing houses, someone in jail. Just, yeah, it was a mad set, set. Put you on a good group. path yeah. for life, know what I mean? And then once I got into boxing, then once I seen Paul and Steve win, win national titles, and I remember like, wow, you're number one in England at your weights. That's unbelievable. And then it was only when I start when I done it, I remember thinking, oh, well, now I'm probably a bit better than boxing than I'm a footy. Yeah, and then that's when I started like thinking, oh, what? I'll have to um, do this properly now because I never used to do it properly. Even when I was like, making weight for championships, I'd finish the gym, go straight out and meet my me mates, and I'd swap me tea for a pack of mini eggs. Lads, you know what? It's mad that you're saying this. This sounds like me when I was when I was like 15, 16, I was first making weight for fights. I'd be like. Oh, yeah, there's that much in that, but I can go and have a whisper of gold, and that's yeah. just like just eating that. Yeah, even though it's yeah. lad, it's like the nutrition is completely off. There's yeah. not, it's not giving you nothing. But yeah. you thought, oh, yeah, if I replace that meal with that chocolate bar, it's it's yeah, still about the same. It's still yeah. averaging it out, isn't it? Yeah, you understand what I call it. When you're oh, younger, man. lad, you just think, oh, yeah, that's it. Weighs that much, so it'll be that much. But yeah. you don't realize that the sugar and all yeah. that what's in there just giving will... you no benefit either, really. Yeah, no nutrients, no nothing like that. I know exactly what you mean, there, lad. 
So when did you like when you was a kid? When did you win like your first like ABAs or anything like that? That's right. That's a fourteen. I went right into the. I had I had seven won seven in the amateurs like club shows. Then I went in my first championships and I lost. I lost to a kid who had loads. I, I won a couple of fights. Then I lost in the semi finals to a kid who had loads. And then the next championships, then I won. And then when I was when I was a junior, so like from. 15 to 17, 18. I, I never lost a junior fight. Me, I won both junior ABAs back to back. I won the that's some NABCs, going that you know, yeah. like, especially then, with the judging. What was like that, like yeah. the point score and, and all that back then? It like. went to a point then when I never boxed on many club shows because of that. Yeah, I don't mean say like no one had boxed me, but I was just always going to fight in championships and then after the championships because I'd win them, I'd bo go away boxing for England. And then by the time I was back, there's probably another championship starting. Was was like Team GB even going back then? Probably it was. So that got made that. then a little bit. So when I just won the senior ABA, so when yeah. I just turned nineteen, so the Rotunda used to have like a, a rule, a tradition. You can go in the senior ABAs at eighteen, but the Rotunda used to keep you out a year, and they they, they they'd let you go in at nineteen. So your first year as a senior, they'd like match you with people who'd lose in the area. So. If if six fighters went in the area in the areas at your weight, whoever lost the next club show, we try and say, look, can we put Liam Smith versus him on on your on yeah. your show, and then just like just get used to fighting men. Yeah. So I went the ABAs at nineteen, won them, and then uh, just before I boxed for England, just for the ABAs though, England couldn't really separate me and another lad from the northeast. Yeah. So they were taking us away for England, but they kept picking two of us at our weight. And like I'd box their number one, he'd box the number two. Two days later, we'd swap, swap and box, box the other yeah, one. And then they couldn't split us up. Then in the ABAs, I ended up meeting him in the quarters, and I uh, stopped him in the first round. Just just caught him with the left two, dropped him, and the ref stopped it. And then uh, so I went number one in England yeah. after I won the ABAs. I went on to then win them, but GB had already be just been made, and Bradley Saunders was already the number one. Yeah, because back then it didn't have no funding and stuff like no. that. Did it? So GB that had just been. Really like... That had just been put and he'd already been picked to go the Olympic qualifiers I wouldn't have qualified anyway at that, at that stage you know what I mean they yeah. were they'd been boxing at that level for, for, for a while so yeah, starting boxing 14 I wouldn't have not Actually, young it's late lad anyway. it's late, late lad. anyway yeah but like, then obviously when, when, when I won the ABAs and he was already number one in Britain in on the GB squad so he went he was basically the GB number one he went to qualifiers and to be fair to him he qualified first tournament or second tournament so yeah, nice. not even like there were three qualifying tournaments. If he went the first two, they wouldn't have done it, but they could have then gone, well, look, you've had two chances. You've had two we'll chances, give, give him a go. go. Yeah, but yeah. they wouldn't have, because I'd only just gone on, I'd only just turned 19, and but he, he qualified first or second go anyway and, and went to the Olympics. How's he getting on now then? Did he end up being a pro? He ended up a pro, yeah, he ended up pro. And, then, well, yeah. and then, no, he, 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 I think his, his hands were bad. He was a decent pro. I'm sure he's unbeaten as a pro, but doesn't box no more. Yeah. Yeah, he ended up, he ended up a decent pro. He was a good lad. He, he was Stephen's age, so he won all national titles. Yeah, loads of stuff as an amateur and, yeah, and stuff like that. Kid, yeah. Like, that's the thing with the, like that. I think that's the big, massive difference between MMA and boxing, lad. The amateur pedigree that you get is yeah. unbelievable, lad. You have so many amateur fights, it is, especially with the international. Team. If you if you start winning national titles, especially no one, no, if our Stephen has been, you name a country, has been South Africa, India. Yeah, I think I like Peter, like, Peter McGrail. Like Peter traveled has been travelled the world, yeah. the world in the like, amateurs, getting paid for. Like for yeah, it's unbelievable, yeah. lad. Yeah. Like you don't get that in MMA, no. lad. In MMA, my amateur fights were all in the fucking Olympia. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. All my amateur fights are in the Olympia or. Grand Central, yeah. Shit like I know, that, that's, that, I mean. that's the thing with, with, especially when you get on that setup. When you get on the England setup, it's unbelievable. And especially now, the way, the way like you know, times just fucking change. It's moving. You know what I mean? The science down there. You go on that GB setup. You don't want for nothing. You've yeah. got your running tracks. You've got your physios. You've got yeah, every, everything you know, there under the one in, roof in yeah. it. Literally, you've got it's your nutritionist, your S and C, all that. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing. Like I always used to speak to Peter about that. Like you're in Sheffield for that's four days a week. All, like, that's what I killed our car. My car mates is it. You're yeah. in Sheffield all, like, all that's, week. Brandon was the same. Like Brandon just ended up swerving it. Brandon yeah. didn't. didn't I didn't like want it to, at you all. know. So I, I always said, as soon as we win the ABAs, I'm saying I'm pro. I didn't like the amateurs anywhere. I was yeah. never ever suited to the amateur style. And uh, I always said, as soon as we win the ABAs, I'm saying I'm pro. And then what's a funny story with me that. I won the ABAs, then went away to the um, Hungary and we boxed, the tournament was finished. Yeah. And uh, we all ended up on the aisle. <coughs> had to flying home the next morning, dead early, so we had to be in the session dead early. I'm lying in bed, just still asleep. Yeah. We had to knock on my door. So I got fined for it, but then I turned pro on the back of this tournament. And um, 
So I had to go, when I went for my medical in front of the British Boxing Board, they were like, so you still got a two hundred and fifty pound fine outstanding with the with the England England boxing. I went, you yeah, you that up, yeah. I went, oh, I, I slept in late and uh, they went, you were drinking alcohol. I went, yeah, the tournament had finished and they were like, they made that like I was fucked on the ale. I yeah, was like, look, the tournament was finished. They went, okay, well, you know, we advise not to have have a drink after the fight. And I went, yeah. And they were like, why? I said, well, obviously because you've made weight and, and you've dehydrated and you've shots to the head, yeah, 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 stuff like that. Yeah, but he made me feel like I was a fucking alcoholic. Yeah. Honestly, at all. <laughs> and you're only a 19 year old yeah. kid who's just been out celebrating because you like, just won. Yeah, it was not like, not like we'd had murder and smashed the bar or pissed. We, we were on the ale and then had to be in a session for like half six in the morning. To play and you're home. not going to get up to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, mean? I probably would have stayed up knowing me, lads, because I knew I wouldn't yeah, have woke up the next hell. day. Yeah. Probably would have stayed Mad. up all night, lads, because yeah. I wouldn't have got up. But um, yeah, lads, so when you went pro, what was it like, lad? Obviously, it was. What was your first fight? Was yours like the Olympian and shit like that? Everton Park. Everton Park. Brilliant. And honest to God, it was, it was, I used to love Everton Park and the amateur, even in the ABAs. It was a boss little venue. It was always busy. It was always like, the ABAs were always in darkness with just the lights on the ring. It's fucking boss. But I made my debut there. But, but, turn, it's a, it's a mad one. You turn pro. You, you know, you're earning buttons. People think you're fucking. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. I was the same in MMA. You know like, my first purse for an MMA fight lad was 500 quid yeah. and that was good at the time because yeah, well, I, I had a decent mom time was, mom was good at the time I remember doing a deal with Warren and um, I think I'd, I'd done a grand a round so I was on four grand a fight for four rounds yes, it was Sam. good money at the time yeah. and it was also like it's it, it's brutal it's a brutal business boxing but like you've got people now you, you've got to sell tickets yeah, to cover your purse lad, and all that's that that's the thing like I, speaking to Brandon and Liam that day but I've got to like sell a certain amount of tickets to cover purses yeah. for their opponents and shit know, like that oh, it's just, it's a mad one with it though. It equals itself out in a sense that I, I can't turn up tomorrow and go and train and I'm feel, go and train at Melwood. I can't just turn up. Yeah. If you want to turn pro now, you can turn pro. And if you've got no background, if you've got no like, you know, you're not coming with any titles, all they'll do is if they don't know nothing about you, they'll just send someone to watch your spot. And if you can protect yourself, you get a boxing license. Yeah. And I think that's a little bit. It is a bit. I know what you mean there. Because like made. literally going pro and boxing and MMA, you literally just go. I'm gonna go pro now. No, like the the YouTubers, the YouTubers getting pro licenses was fucking embarrassing. It's ridiculous. Now. Yeah, it is. I know it's a big circus, the Jake Paul thing. To be fair to him, he can't have have a go. Yeah, he can't have good. a go. Give him his gym. He's not good, but, but he can get throw a pro a license. Yeah, yeah, he'd get a he'd get a pro boxing license. Now he he's, he's not like oh, he's calling Canelo and all that out. Obviously, that's no, that's just embarrassing, lad. Yeah, he's good enough to get a pro license, but then. When you had Lassa's brother and that KSI, they, yeah. you know what I mean? They shouldn't be getting boxing licenses. They shouldn't be called pros. And people were like, you're Where's just the jealous exhibition about or was the second one an actual the pro, one fight? Was a pro fight? Was yeah. it a proper Look, pro fight? Look, it was down to Eddie. Like, Eddie yeah. made them. Eddie got involved, saw the Palm <laughs> Queen, knew, knew they sold, and then obviously made them. He just said, Look, I'll, I'll promote it, but you're a turning pro, you're getting boxing licenses, and you're fighting in 10 ounce gloves. It's just crazy, lad. Like, how they can just do that. Like, mm. the one that made, like, the maddest one for me was when they give Holyfield one. Yeah, after that. Against after Belfort. The, yeah. Like after Belfort's that. a big yeah. juiced up machine. Like, I've been watching him in the UFC since like 2000. They fucked up on that, dogs. They put a little clip out on the bag of Hollyfield and he's like, wow, he can See, he I haven't even seen that clip. clip. No, just I haven't before, even seen that before, clip. They put a clip on the bag and like, wow, I'll just give him a license back. He's like, no, he's is 50 he 59 yeah. or something like yeah, that, lad? Fucking, bad. fucking <laughs> ridiculous, lad. I couldn't, when I, when I, I never seen none of the build up to that fight, lad, I'll be honest. I never seen no build up. I just seen Belfort absolutely demolish him and was like, so How have they let that happen? Money, I know. Like the easiest money he's ever made, seriously. It's crazy. Especially in boxing, like because the, bo- the the money in that, especially that was on that silver card, yeah. was it on that. Yeah, it the was money in that, paying fortunes as the well. The money on mean. that lad yeah. is just ridiculous, especially compared to MMA. Yeah. I I would guess that Belfort got more for that fight than he did for most of his whole yeah, MMA of career. Course, yeah, well, I think to be fair, I think look that 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 Jake Paul's generating money himself, regardless. But you know, as I, I, I read Woodley's just got got his highest payday. And yeah, Woodley's, Woodley's, highest, Woodley's a former him. UFC world champion, and the highest payday he's ever had was against Jake Paul. That's what I mean. It's by crazy. a mile. So, but I just, my, I looked at it as they, they're generating their own money. I'm, I'm, I'm referring back to the YouTubers again, but because it was nothing to do with someone tweeting me when I, when I slagged them, and someone tweeted me saying, You're just jealous because they're making millions. I'm not bothered about the money. They if they're making a mockery money. of the sport, though, yeah. lad, know what I mean? That's the thing more, I say as more, well. You're not pro boxer. If you want to be a pro, like Jake Paul now, yeah, he still hasn't fought one pro boxer. I know no, he's, he, hasn't. he was trying to fight Tommy Fury, but he still hasn't but fought a pro lad, boxer. He's a crab as well, though. Really, that, 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 that'd be a good fight. That's what I'm saying. Tommy Fury's only a novice pro. Yeah. So Jake Paul is a novice pro himself, but 
He's that never one. fought an actual boxer. No, that's what I mean. You're saying he's five and zero and all that, but and the thing with the Woodley as well, they're lad, generating their own money. They bring their own money. To Woodley the can swing a dig. Yeah. Give him his due. He can swing mm-hmm. a dig, but at the same time, he's a wrestler, lad. Yeah, he's a wrestler. He's yeah. not. He's not a boxer. boxer yeah. Like that's he can mean. swing that's a dig. Didn't see that yeah. shot either. He's not. A, he's not a thing. You're, I, like it. It looks like he like he goes to fake a takedown. Yeah. I think yeah. Jake Paul, and he goes yeah. where it's just in his head. No, no, what you're saying there, the shot's not a bad shot. To be fair, I was saying, and I'm sure it's tweeted all. Went to tweet whoever. I seen all the things saying that was fixed. I was like, wow, whoever thinks whoever that thinks shot that's was fixed, fixed unfollow me that. now. It was, and, he, and he does like, it's not a good thing, but he goes he down and just wins yeah. a big right angle. I said that, you can't, like, you can't fake the way he went down. That's not now, fake. That was another thing I was saying. You can't, you can't fall flat on your face without putting your hands, 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 hands out if you're, you're not you're unconscious. Not I yeah. always say it, people are like, oh, do you reckon that's after I'm like, lad, if you're about to fall flat on your flat yeah. on your face and you're awake, yeah. you put your hands out yeah, to stop you from doing thing, it. Yeah. It's just a natural reaction. Yeah, face that's what when someone people are like to me, oh, do you reckon that's blag? I'm like, no like, come on, yeah. you can't say that's blag because yeah. if he's went face down and he's landed on his head, yeah. there's no way that that is fake. Yeah, as much as I hate that Jake Paul, I think he's a proper bad bell end. Like, have you seen that song he's made? No, lad, he's brought a song out about Dana White, lad. I oh, know. I see. I seen the thing on, on the on the on the Instagram saying that he's filming it or something. But no, he's made it. a proper like diss track on Dana White and lad, it's embarrassing, lad. Yeah. Like it's not even funny. Know That's what I mean. You know what? Some of the stuff he's fucking like said. What rubbed me up the professional boxer side to it and, and whatever else. But then then some of the other things, I keep what he's putting in contracts now. I'm thinking. And all goes on you in that sense, like the Tommy Fury one, whatever he's gonna give him a million dollars to fight him, but if he beats him, you can have an extra five hundred grand. Fucking boss, yeah. You give Woodley a Rolex like... for taking on late note, late notice. Um, that's what happens what when you've got that much fucking money. Don't what he's it? saying to Dana White now about that, like up the fighters' money. But that's the only thing. I'll be honest. That's the thing what's pissing me off, about, lad. He's going on. He's trying to act like a martyr. Like he's helping MMA fighters. He's not, lad. He's just yeah. doing that for his own publicity. Yeah, of he's course. Doing that. That, he's that, not, that's, that's, that's what the only thing mean. that's pissing me off about people yeah. like, oh, he's actually being good for MMA fighters. He's not. He just wants to make a show a day in a white. Yeah. And, that, and that's the, the perfect way white, of doing yeah. it. You yeah. know what I mean? It is all about that. Like. It's all about that, lad. It's all mm. like the way he's saying, oh, I'm going to end up getting in the cage. You're not, lad. You're, mm. you're not. Stop lying. Yeah. If you want to have an MMA fight, I'll fight you in my Mars garden tomorrow. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know what. I've. I've seen I seen Bell you tweeting the other day something about him and I was like, no instead of just looking if, if, if I'm anywhere like that and a name, I'd I just go because he's what I'm saying about them contacts. He's good at what he's doing. Is yeah. he? If I was Bell you or someone of a, of a, of, a, of a name who you could draw him into a fight with, I'd just say, look, I'll fight you free for free. Yeah. But if I knock you out in two rounds, I want a million quid off you. Yeah. And. He's probably the type that, all right, Sand, I'll do that and I'll put it in the contract. And Bell, you probably would knock him out. Exactly, that. exactly, that's you know what I mean? So that's what I'd do. I wouldn't just, I wouldn't jump on it like, you know, when you're going to get good money, so you're calling the yeah. YouTuber out. But I'd just say, look, I'll do it for free. But when I embarrass you and knock it out in two rounds, I want like, a million. I get asked about him, lad, all the time, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I get asked, about, you obviously do yourself because yeah. you're in a box, lad. I get asked about him myself, and my response is always just like, he's a mushroom or yeah. he's a sausage. Because I don't yeah. even want to get involved in the conversation yeah. because. It's embarrassing for the sport, yeah, lad. But people outside just don't even know. I'm, I'm, I get asked, how would you fight Jake Paul for of course would? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> if someone's offering you know me that mean? much money, why wouldn't I? For an easy night's work. Not, I'm not beat being him up, stupid lad. if you said to me, now you've got, here's, here's, here's a million quid, there's two million quid, you've got to do four rounds with Tyson, a prime Tyson, as it sounds. But, you know, it's not, it'd never ever do that. It'd never ever be like that. People people are always done in the past, such as such as getting so many million and they're like, yeah, would you fight him for that? And of course, we'll make, but like, I can't just say, right, I'll fight him for four million. It's stupid, then, no people go, well, why wouldn't you do that? And you're like, obviously, mm. but is it me getting offered that contract yeah. to fight for that much money? No, it's not. So, what, what am I meant to do? <laughs> but, like, obviously, we've spoke about the money side of things, lad. What's it like winning a fucking a boxing world title, lad? You know what that, I mean? That's what, that's what, what I mentioned that must before. Be like. that, was, that was the. I always had pressure on me for the British title and I just settled on a British title because before I said I didn't even yeah, want to box. Yeah, thinking about it, lad, you must have had some you know pressure I mean? on you just because of your, your Stephen had won it. Brothers. Yeah, and I, and I just thought, you know what, once I won that, it just settled me and then obviously the world title bit was selfish, like selfish reasons. It was like, wow. Yeah. Because I watched Paul fall short of it, Stephen challenge yeah. and lose. And then when I did win it, I got all the fucking plaudits and all, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it was. I bet you at the same time you felt a bit bad for them too. Yeah, well, like, I was good, and I was good for them, especially you know, and more so, not both of them really, but more so. Paul probably should have got his first one. Yeah, he got robbed in the first day, but I'm fight. He got a chance to put it right, and he and he didn't. He did lose the second one. 
Stephen just come up against two for, two champions who, who put in their career best foot performances against him. Yeah, he was unlucky. He's probably the unlu unluckiest fighter not to win a world title. Stephen. Then when I did win it, it was unbelievable at the time. But then after that, I never really because I was still a, a rag ass and didn't really didn't want a boxing dream of being yeah. world champion. I just thought of it like another little belt to be honest. Yeah, and now when I've seen now people do it. Even when I've seen Callum have it, I wish I appreciated mine a bit more yeah. at the time. And I don't know what, I'm half the same there. When when I won mine, like, I know it's a world title on Cage Warrior, it's not the same as UFC or yeah, a world yeah. title like you had, yeah. but I just let it run away with myself, yeah. lad. I thought I was the fucking next best thing yeah. since sliced bread, lad. I was out every weekend <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking thought I was fucking the next fucking best thing in the world, lad. And it all got to me head, lad, to be yeah. honest. Like, my mum was just like, I just didn't really. I just I won the belt, got home, showed everyone who wanted to see it, and then the belt was like on top of the washing basket or just something. Someone said to me, "Where's your belt?" I said, "It's all in the house somewhere." Like, yeah. It was, it, and I, I, that's the only thing what I wish I could go back to. You know, I wish I appreciated it yeah. a little bit more. Thought more I mean? about yeah. it and thought, yeah. Like, did you ever get a replica or anything of it made? Yeah, no, no. I don't. You, you get the actual title. Did you get the actual yeah, belt. And, yeah. And to be fair, because I then went on to the Canelo fight, I seen the heads of the WBO, and obviously they. Um, you're meant to get it engraved and all that, but a kid broke, man. I uh, took it to one of the boxes and he dropped it and snapped a little thing off it. So I just seen the president of the WBO and said, look, I never ever got it, um, an uh, engraved uh, yeah. one. And because it was at the Canelo press conference, he was just like, right, be with you on Thursday. Now I'm in Texas Monday. We flew straight to London Tuesday. Get on Wednesday. Next day, it was delivered all, all engraved with my name yeah. on and all that. So that Fucking was the one I got named. Yeah. And then the Sick one that, that was broke. The one, that, the one that's got a little chip on. It's still like one I, I keep more that that's the actual one. That's the actual one. Yeah, that's the main. Yeah, bin, you know what I mean. So I do obviously now when I look. Yeah, I know what my bed fucking. I've just moved out, so I'm in the middle of moving out. Yeah. It's going up on the wall. The belt. Yeah, belt up on the wall. She got nice. me a frame, but then I keep saying to her, look. Everything we see on social media, like Josh Taylor, his world title in his living room. Yeah, Frampton's world titles there. Yeah. Man's fucking just in the garage, but a <laughs> So I said that in the New York, it's fucking going up. Oh, well, lad, I just I know what you mean. In, in MMA, lad, you don't get... I lost mine, didn't I? Yeah, I, <laughs> I lost mine in the echo. So we've got a replica, but it's in the gym, lad. We have a little trophy cabinet in yeah. the gym, lad. Molly's replica. Well, Molly had the real one in there. Because no one... Did you do she had to give it back. Yeah, she had to yeah, give it back. Because if, like, if you defend it three times, you get to keep it on Cage Warriors. Yeah. But she got signed right after she won it, didn't she? Yeah. So we had the, the proper belt there, but we're getting a replica made for her. There's, there's, there'll be three replicas, well, four replicas in the gym, because... Uh, Fishy defended this enough times to keep it yeah. but then I went to UFC and then me, Bonner and Molly all like never got to keep it so we're getting yeah. replicas made well man and Fishy's are there but lad it's just them world titles man yeah like, I just can't wait to have a UFC one lad it's yeah, gonna be fucking be sick especially it's gonna be now, brilliant especially for lad. the scouts to win it as well that'd be fucking it's gonna be hectic lad I can't wait lad the next few years are gonna be sick but yeah as you touched on then lad fighting Canelo like Possibly the best, well, he is the best boxer of our generation, lad, by, is, a mile. Yeah, by a mile. Because obviously Mayweather's the generation behind, and he's so Canelo's the best boxer of our generation, lad. Yeah. And I always, like, I, I don't, not on your column here, lad, yeah. but I think you put in a better performance against yeah, him. Yeah, loads, loads, loads I mean? I've, yeah, loads, I've said that, especially in just the way the fight was, even, but it's more like style wise as well. As long as I could suffer out early on, I was always going to have moments in a fight because kind of a fight. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not gonna try. I was never ever gonna try and outbox him, which people have, and I knew I'd have moments, especially at the, at the weight. I was always confident before beforehand. Hindsight now, you'd think, oh, no, well, you, you give it a good go, but beforehand, you couldn't convince me I was gonna lose that fight. Yeah, no, of course, Honestly, I could, I, that's I what I always say to people. I was adamant, and I just thought he's got to come back down to one fifty four. The extra couple of pounds. Yeah, he just fought at the weight above, yeah, hadn't he? he just, just before it, and then come back, down. come back down for mine, and then. I just thought, no, what? If he doesn't hate me early on, I'll get to him late. And he's, he'll be that fucked at the weight. I'll get to him late on. Yeah. And then, um, I know what? It's mad it was going exactly how I thought it was going. I get off my stool for the second half of the fight, round seven. I thought, right, I'm going to put, wanna put it on him now, even, yeah. Even so more now. The pace a bit. And then round seven, he dropped me. And I just thought, he just relaxed then. He was just fucking, right, now I've got the breakthrough. Now I yeah. can hate him. And then he got like a second wins and just, just totally relaxed in everything. You know what I mean? And then, obviously, round nine, he hit me the body shot and, and dropped me. But 
it was more every and I guess now oh, was he a beast? I'm like, no. It was not. not it's not like it. No, that's what I mean. It's not like you got outclassed at all. Yeah, it was nothing to do with his power that surprised me. It was his ability. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I come out first round, fell short. Fell short with a jab and then I f jabbed the body, fell short again. And I thought, right, faint. And I fainted and he just cocked a big right hand. Wow, you're trying to slip. Yeah. Right hand, this 15 seconds into the fight. And I thought, so if I'm not getting it with that in round one. And then it was just more like, he had me switching every little faint, had me fucking switching. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just thought he was, he was class. That's the one thing I always notice when I watch his fights and his thing, he always, had his head movements. Yeah. Like I said, like I never, until I started like proper boxing myself, yeah. I didn't like yeah. actually uh, like understand how good his head yeah, movement was, lad. Like, it's more, uh, that, that, that's his best, even I like can't say, you know, Calm says his best asset is how hard he is. So yeah. kind of like he, he is, he's so hard, like even yeah. like the shoulder rolls he does yeah. and like the little he way shots. where he just does yeah, that he and, the, and the glove skims, you just yeah. like, He's, I wouldn't yeah, even have the class. balls to do that. Yeah. I'd be like that, whoa, get out of yeah. the way of that. And he just literally lets fucking... He's class, are he? He's he lets class. punches, like, skim his beard. Yeah. And you're like, what? You're brave, yeah. you lad. The way he just he moves out of the way of things. And then just turns them. He's, he's class. He is, lad. He's, the he's old, unbelievable. The whole, like, the whole sceptical of it was just, you know... That's what I was going to say as well, lad. In. The stadium, yeah. lad. Like, I, I boxed him in, and, at, in the AT&T Stadium. So that's what I mean. He makes here, Blaze, lad. He's from Philadelphia, so he's on all the NFL stadiums. He's like, lad, that's one of the biggest stadiums in the world. No, it's one of the... But even the set of it, it's just like... It's one of the, it's the best, well, I think it's the best stadium I've been in. And not, yeah. not just because of box there, just everything's up to date. The way, the way people go on now about Tottenham's ground. Just like, mad that like you just that, said you that, know that know I mean? say like the Spurs ground. Yeah, just everything. Everything's just up to date, it. everything's modern, inside, everything's new. It had, it had the Hublot shop inside, it had... Fuck off. Yeah, it was just honestly, it was just... It had the Hublot shop inside. Hublot shop inside. Sick that, honestly. you know, just shows fucking... Yeah. You know, we had there, it is there. Have you got it up there yeah, on the screen? That, that's fucking the, the, like the how many across the side was 70 foot the big screen honest to god it was that, crazy. that's fucking ridiculous when i got that. in the ring though i remember just looking thinking wow where the fuck the empty seats yeah <laughs> it didn't look like there was an empty seat nowhere well how many did it say like that's it's all 52 thousand yeah. yeah it said 52 so whatever they've done they boxed it to be this uh, it was unbelievable the idea. that is unbelievable like you know 52 thousand people but what no when callum boxed them was that an even bigger gaff no, it was smaller, like the same thing. It was a footy, American footy stadium, but there was restrictions. Yeah. So I think that only yeah. had 18,000. I can't in. wait yeah. to fight in a big stadium yeah. like that. You know, I just yeah, can't wait. Like, even just everything about it, you plan your ring walk, no thinking about your ring walks, just everything, everything about the whole situation, knowing you're going to you're gonna fight there somewhere. Do you reckon that's the best place you've ever fought? Yeah, by a mile. By a mile, yeah. yeah. No, I'll, ne I'll never, even just the ring walk, you know, we had, we had arguments with lads, a couple of lads who went to watch me, the father one, was like, that's your ring walk, he said, beef, I'm comparing that now, I don't know if that was better than your Canelo one. Yeah. The Canelo one was unbelievable because of the, the, the place, because of who was there, because of how big it was. Say when I boxed Canelo, only when I watched it back, fucking hell, the stars that were there. Yeah, lad, it's you know mad, I mean? like all the fucking, all the ex-boxers yeah, and all the, like, the Hollywood actors there. and all shit like that, were there singers and all that. But I just thought, I don't know what was what was my best ring walk. I was saying, like, the father one was different because it was kind of all for me. Yeah, and it's the, a, it was a homecoming yeah, way, I don't know what I mean. The Canelo one was hostile in a certain extent, but just fucking unbelievable. Like, even the hostile ones are sick, though, yeah. aren't they, lad? Like, oh, yeah, I've walked out in other people's backyards before. Like, I think it gets you up for face. it. Get you yeah. up for it. You're like, yeah, I'm going to put it on you now yeah. for all these going sick in my Bobby, face. That's what I mean. You couldn't have convinced me I weren't going to win that fight. Like, my next match. fight's the opposite of that. Yeah. I've got a Mexican coming yeah, to London. To London yeah. <laughs> so you get it all, so, yeah. yeah, so he's going to get all that. His head's yeah. going to fall off, lad. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be sick, lad, the O2, but it's not got nothing on that stadium you fought in, lad. Yeah. That's it. Uh, I can't wait that's for it in the future. I've been in, to be fair. I must... That's the, the as you say, lad. The Dallas Cowboys. It's one of the fucking biggest teams in the world, isn't it, lad? Everything's Badly. modern. Everything's up to date. To fuck, my man's a Philly Eagles fan, so he hates them, lad. Uh. Hates them with a passion, <laughs> lad. Hates the Dallas Cowboys, don't you, lad? Jerry Jones. <laughs> I've got top. They get they give me a top for the press conference when I got there. Yeah, yeah they like they were asking me before. I'm what 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 what's your favourite number? And then when I got there, they had they had a top Smith, and then. Your favourite number on? Yeah, that's yeah. a belt of that though. Yeah, on the press conference. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been it. That's what he compared to me. Yeah. It was like, you know, the way people in the UK support Man United. He was like, that's what it's like. He said, people in America just support the Dallas Cowboys when they've yeah. got no team to associate with. So yeah. because of that, lad, he hates okay. them, lad. But it makes me it makes me laugh so much, lad, because he's often hates them. He's made up, lad. Tom Brady's retired. He's like, yeah, yeah fuck him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hates no, them, lad. Sick. But um, 
Yeah, obviously you fought in enemy territory there, but I bet you it was worse fighting in enemy, enemy territory in Russia. Yeah, the Russian one was just, you know what, it was a fucking mad one, the Russian one. You'd laugh as in. So before it, I'd been out the ring, 17 months I'd been out the ring, and I just weren't really getting up. It was, obviously, it was the pandemic. Yeah, I was about to say the COVID times. It was and hard work, even getting of, fights, were Only a handful were fighting in Eddie's garden at the time, and um, it was hard to, like, generate money for, for, for big, decent fights on the bill. So... When I got offered it, I thought, no, what, I might just have to take it. And I was getting told, look, you'll get a fair crack of the whip. And kept getting told, kept getting told. I thought, no, what, a former world champion, they might kind of respect me in that sense and won't rob me. But when we got there, fucking hell. What, from the get-go when you got there, was they from just the fucked up something? Wow, these are out of here. So the flight was a fucking nightmare. Was it one of them, like three different flights three different or something? Flights. Lads and Russia knew you were going to say hours. that, you know. <laughs> but then they, they said you can't fly direct to Russia from the UK because of the pandemic, because of COVID, Russia have stopped it. So we flew Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Moscow, Moscow, Yekaterinburg. So the, it was like a 24-hour travel for what what is only a four and a half hour distance. Yeah. Um, but in airports watching the fucking, the boxing, um, it was on Tasha for Katie Taylor. Yeah, yeah. I we're in watching, that, watching that on the laptops and all that. But then when we've got to Russia, <laughs> come on, we've got to Russia by about six in the morning. Um, goes outside to go right. Um, look, three years, there's only six of us got there. That's um, three years are going to one hotel, three are going to the other. So I was like, what the fuck do you mean? So there, there's no rooms in the hotel. So I was like, well, how, how the fuck that happens? So have you only booked, have you booked the hotel last night or something? Yeah, booked a certain you amount of rooms. Yeah, in advance you book so many rooms, don't you? So what the so fuck are you on about? What are you on about then? The fellow who's speaking English with us is, is like, Liam, look, it be sorted, be sorted. So I thought, right, goes outside. And then there's this little fucking shithead, like, white white car. <laughs> like, what the fuck's that? <laughs> Said, Liam and Law be sorted. You. Couldn't even get, so three of us had to get in this and our bags couldn't fit in. <laughs> So I thought, what, these are, so right, I said to the fellow who's speaking English, I said, right, I'm fo- I'm on the phone, I'm phoning my manager now, and I just thought, you should fucking get in it, mate, yeah. so I was like, I'm not, I'm not putting up with this. So I asked Eve, and I trying to like, keep me a little bit calm, I said, beef, look, just you go and get in bed, we'll go to the other hotel, you go and get in bed, yeah. been traveling 24 hours, so by the time you get up, it was sort in the morning, to be fair to them, I've got up, woke up, and then 12 o'clock, I've gone downstairs, and the, the other lads were back in the hotel, yeah. and, and it, it, it was, was sorted, sorted yeah. yeah, and then from there on in, they were, they, were, they, were, they were all right. They, they give us access to the gym when we needed it and that. And then, uh, I'd say, then, then, then the fight day, it was just, when everything, when everything rings a bell now. I when you're looking back before. now, you think you should have fought. They never even hell. had a belt there for me to win. So I, I was, the kids are boxed, it was a vacant title, so there should be a brand new belt there yeah. for whoever wins to take home. It's a vacant yeah. belt. So if you beat, if you beat the champion and take his belt, you get the belt, like, I had to do it with Fala because yeah. he was class as a champion. I had to basically go in, not going to change his army, take your belt back, and I have to wait for a brand new one to be sent to me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, with with the Kerbin off fight. That's mad the way it's like that yeah, in boxing. That's crazy, that. They should just have a brand new one there, yeah, ready, just, ready. just in case yeah. that happens, you know what I mean? But for the vacant belt, whoever wins takes the belt home. They never had a brand new belt there for me to win. The belt, what we were getting focused on, that was Kerbinov's old one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just thought, we're never, ever winning fighting him on it was victory day which is a f- massive day in Russia I'm, yeah. I'm not clued on what it is all around the city in the day was, was closed because they had all like the old war tanks just driving around the city victory day is a f- one big thing big over thing there over so there, I was yeah. never ever was never going to beat them anyway unless I stopped them and they probably got disqualified doing that <laughs> and now when I look back I just think I was never getting that fucking decision yeah, it's mad when you, lad. I, I can remember, I, I never watched the, the whole fight. I can remember watching the start and the finish and something happened in the middle where I had to go and do something. But I can remember thinking at the end, yeah, he's got yeah. this. No, what, the first he's round, this, the first round, I, I, I drop him in the first, not at every knockdown. He went here, but it's a knockdown. Yeah, and then it's after, a 10-8 so, no matter what. After, after the fight, and then when we when we got the scorecards, I lose the first round and all three, three judges scorecards. What? And then what, what should have been a 10-8 to me was a 10-9 against me. Like, wow, that's a three and point then, swing. Yeah, that's a t- then after the fight, so he goes back to the hotel, there's the judges and the referees sitting having, a, having something to eat. And our Paul was fuming anyway. He's gone, do us a favour, mate. Can you tell me how that's not a knockdown? And he has the video to think. And he just speaks foreign to him. And just speaks, and then someone else comes over and Paul and goes, Paul, just leave it. It's gone now. It's gone. You can't, though. That's something that I can't. Like, just, just justify how that is not a knockdown. He had, he, had, he had it in front of him. And the referee just had none of them. 
Wow. Well, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't and know that he gave that first cards, answer to him. Came and I've got the first round. That's, fu- yeah. that's absolutely despicable. So that's now disgusting. It's fucking, it was never, ever getting it. How did he even get away with that, though? No. That's the thing, lad. That's the only, like, boxing, it can be so corrupt. Yeah. But, you know, because even though it was a big fight, it was on, like, a big stage and with two half well-known names, because of, like, the, the title it was for, it weren't a world title fight, so... There was an really international scru- belt, yeah, weren't it? They don't like really scrutinise it enough, which they should do, because I lost... I was number two in the rankings. Now, I'm going to say... Was he behind you in the rankings Yeah, he the was time? five. Now, basically, we've just swapped. You went to five? I went, went to five, two? he went to two. Wow. And if I had to beat him... I'd have either fought Tim Zoo next or the or challenge for the world title. For the title. world title, yeah. Now, Did he, has he challenged for the world title since? No, no, no. no, no he, 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 fought, he was meant to fight. He meant to fight. And then, it's mad. I, I think it's all gone against him. All the stink over man has probably made him doubt himself a little bit because he was meant to fight in December and pulled out an hour before the fight. Made weight. They'd made weight. The other kid was all bandaged. An hour before? And yeah, he, got bandaged, he got bandaged up. And thought and and then pulled out and now before the ring walk yeah his ass has probably fell out of then he was full the boxing was going on and then and basically probably the time you meant to start your warm up he's went he nah, pulled out this. he said I'm not fighting I don't feel well which is fucking crazy that is crazy he, um, that's probably where he's thought so, uh, what happened he come to Liverpool he come to Liverpool um, from the me and Far if I come to the hotel beforehand and I just thought I said, shook his hands and he's like hey Liam he said hey, you win tonight then we talk I said go fuck yourself I said I win tonight like I won last time I said uh, go on to you I said it should be you, you in the you, opposite yeah, corner mate that, never you mind need, you need yeah. to get that rematch back on over here though but you know? I just thought it should, be, it should be you in the opposite corner yeah. never mind you know you watching lad you do definitely need to get that rematch on definitely on deal never take it though probably not no no because they, they, they want his fight the other week in December was meant to be Russia yeah. they won't leave Russia unless they have to and you know unless, until they have to Deal price price like like with Liverpool, he got offered to fight in Liverpool and just priced himself out of it, yeah. just stupid money. But what I said before, and uh, everything happens for the reason. If I didn't get robbed in Russia, we wouldn't have had that night with Farley. And obviously now, if I didn't be Farley, I probably wouldn't be boxing at Madison Square Garden next. Yeah. So, you know what well, I mean? lad, that's the one thing I want to move on to next. Lad, beating that Wooly back up. <laughs> oh lad, that was great. You know, lad, yeah, that was great, lad. I landed right as you were walking out, lad. It was sick. I got there through the back and I could see... Yeah. I, I was behind you, watched you coming round like the curtain bit there. You went that way and I cut through and yeah, went out so, and was yeah. sitting in front of Carragher yeah, and that. Yeah, he was just sitting lad, by Molly, mate. He's it was thing. fucking <laughs> great, lad. Me and Molly were going absolutely bananas. Oh, Molly's on the lad, team, I, I, I loved it, lad. I swear. Like, I can remember saying to me mates as well because me mates were like, oh, what's that going to happen? And I, 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 me and Molly both said exactly what was going to happen. We were like, father will come out strong. Yeah, he will take it in the first few rounds. He's not asked. He's took bigger shots off Canelo, and yeah. then he'll come out in the in the later rounds, and he'll fucking finish him. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened, lad. That's what I mean. From the start of it, you know what? Like, it was not one I wanted. It was not one I picked because I just thought I'm not giving someone a chance like that. I'm, I'm, what, what what am I gonna call him up for? And vice versa, he, he weren't calling me up. But to be fair to Eddie, that's like the businessman they are. He mentioned it, and then. He just knew where it'd sell the way it sold. Yeah, of course. From in Liverpool, two local you know lads. I mean? Well, I say two local lads, yeah. even though he's the biggest <laughs> wool going. You are a proper local yeah. lad, a proper scout lad, and everyone was back. I don't know anyone who backed him no, in that no. fight. That's, uh, that's why the, the arena was fucking 95% or 98%. Oh, what, lad, I always say, I mean? lad, I can remember when he fought Scott Fitz. Mm, yeah. I've never, ever seen a scout get booed when he walk out. Yeah, and, and he got against, booed when against, he fought Scott against Fitz. Against the lad from Blackpool. Lad, against the lad who's not even from Liverpool. He got booed on his way out. That shows what a mushroom he is, lad. Know what I mean? But, what, 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 I mean, once once it starts, once I I just said to my manager, look, if that's the route we're going, then, then tell me, because then I'll get right up for that fight. Yeah. But at, before I didn't want. Then when, when everything got me, I just thought, right, there's a proper buzz about this. So that's what made me made me get up for it. Yeah, want to get into and it. And then I, what just the closest it was getting. Then when he was back in Liverpool, obviously he trains in London. He's back in Liverpool. I just thought, like, I was up for it then and. Obviously, that the night was fucking was unbelievable. Obviously, like the seeing night the builds up the, night the, the, the week. Lad. Like well, the I atmosphere. knew he'd start like that. Yeah. I knew he'd start, and he just he does it every fight. Don't he? Like every fight, yeah. he comes out lad, and tries to knock it out in the first yeah. few rounds. Every point, he done it with Scott Fitz. And Scott yeah. Fitz rode the wave and beat him up. But he, um, I just think it's just boring now. You know what I mean? I thought you come out to the fight with a little bit of credit after your interview, and you've gone back to just talking it's shit just again. Excuse after yeah, that, you know lad, I mean? where you tweeted them back the other day. I know, but like, no, what? Cause, <laughs> cause someone, so, I'm getting tagged and everything. Like, 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 what are you asked for? Like, I'm asked because you just. Because he's you know, talking yeah. shit. That's why you're asked. Before it, someone sent me like, like, 
what my coach has sent me about 15 pictures of before the fight like what he was oh, like Joe was in the gym today lad. Joe was, Joe was yeah. shirt selling me and then I went back on Shane's fucking yeah, Insta the other day change, you've had the and then you've got like where he's, yeah, where he's deleted all his tweet all his thing yo since, yeah. since your fight you've went back on his coach's shit on his coach's shit it's like no stone left unturned yeah. and now he's saying it for this he's fight he's never once mentioned the weight and then uh, since the fight he's done a million posts mentioning he's moving up in weight and you know the white cut killed me, yeah. this and that. It's not and like I just thought, no, what? If you, all right, if you, if you sit here in front of you now, I'll wipe the floor. You're like, you're going on the white cut killed you. I'll guarantee you now, I bet every penny I own in the bank. Now, you I could, go yeah, heavier than you. You could fight him at a weight above I and cut still more beat him up. Than you. Do you know what I mean? I guarantee you, you made weight before me. I'm sitting in a sauna. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making weight and you're, you've posted, you've made weight. Yeah. I, you made weight before me. And I guarantee you now I cut more weight than you. I've been at 154 longer than you. I've been at 154 my whole career. Yeah. I've failed weight in the past, which proves how, how tough it is. You know yeah. what I mean? And I thought, I watched the interview a couple of, well, I watched a bit, a part of it and then I couldn't watch no more. But I can't listen to him, lad, after the shit. I someone have to just said, listen to how many excuses he made. And he made the weight, going to the gym, he's missing his son. Um, the, sparring man, partners, <laughs> the sparring partners, the sparring partners it weren't real. It went um some he makes he makes about six different excuses and I thought wow and I, and I posted I put some excuses here just to let you know I also had a brand new baby September and fourth yeah. you October I've got two I've got two young girls under the age of two talk about hard work with kids now all right if I'm away from them away from them I'm missing them and if I'm at home with them I'm up the fucking wall with two yeah. kids so I I I have I had a tough two and I just thought you know what you're just boring with these excuses and then the other day put. He put a load of things. First time in my life, I'm taking it serious. That's oh, one of the ones I've seen you know where I mean? you tweeted them back on that. Shite, boring <laughs> now, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, as you said, lad, the weight doesn't come into it when you're in the ring getting your head punched in. Yeah. So what are you on about? And, like, the amount of excuses he's come out with, he's just, lad... Oh, lad, I hate him, Absolutely, lad. I just don't know what. All right, Sant, I understand if you struggle with weight and your box shite and you were flat... People are raving about how you box. You yeah. come out to the fight. Yeah, the first few like, rounds, he did. He looked, he looked all right. Fight, people, like, I didn't think, I'll be honest, lad, I didn't think he'd have that much success was, against you yeah. in the first few rounds. I was like, nah. Like, and that's what I, I knew he'd From the get go, I knew you were going to outclass him. But yeah. I didn't. I knew he always comes out 100%, doesn't yeah. he? The first what I mean. few rounds. But I didn't even think he'd have that much success against you. He was hitting you quite a bit. I was yeah. like, wow, I didn't now, think he did him this much. I knew he'd start in fifth gear and I knew he'd, he'd be competitive early. But I started worse than I should have started. I was slow. My legs were not. If you look, go and look at the end of round one and round two. Declan's on on the ring apron, swatting my legs, and he's shaking. Like you're legs. sitting in the first round, you're sitting in the slow. corner, like shaking your head, yeah. like what and am I, I get doing? Cut, I get cut a minute and a half in, and I just thought, wow, trust this to happen against him. Yeah, you know what I mean. It was off a head clash of heads as well. Yeah. No, it was a punch. Was I thought it was a clash of heads because I argued the ref, the ref come over. Said cut was caused by a punch. I said it was not caused by a head. Then when I watch it back, it, I think it is caused by a punch. Is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll be honest. I did think that was a head clash as well myself. But then I just thought like. You know, my warm-up, I, I fucked up my warm-up for someone so experienced. I started warming up too early. And then the the fight before, Will Trey Williamson and Cheeseman went longer than I thought. Than you'd expect I thought that to, was yeah. going to get stopped. And then it went longer, never got stopped till 10 or 11. So I'd sat back down and I just never got my legs back going again. Yeah. And that's why I started slower than I should have started. I always knew he was going to start the way he started. But, you know, we were going one way. He was going that way. I was going that way. Yeah. And the fight showed. It did show that, lad. As I say, lad, before it, anyone with half a clue on any sort of fight sports called it. To yeah. be honest, lad, any everyone knew that you were going to beat them, lad. You know, there's a there's a golf in class. Yeah, simple That's as that. That's what I mean. It's easy. It's easy. Like, say whether they watch Russian, thought no worries on the slides or what I thought. You fucked up either way. You know, I, I was out there in seventeen months, and I still should have beat Kabanov, who's probably a better fighter than Fowler. Yeah, he beats Fowler. You know what I mean? So I just think you you fucked up a little bit there, and now you know it showed you they have fucked up. It was lad, it was funny though, because like everyone was talking about him in the build up to it, like he was the golden boy, lad, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I always had him and that, you know what I mean? Like, we already had him and that, lad, he was like the golden boy, and then when you squealed him, oh, lad, I, I was so happy. I always <laughs> lined Eddie up. I, I, lad, watching you him. beat him was like watching one of my teammates yeah. win a fight, lad, because yeah. like, I was like, Yes, yeah. I went bananas, lad, and yeah, you won. I've it was fucking sick. After, but just, <laughs> and I always wind Eddie up, I always say, he's your blue eye. Yeah, he's your blue eye. When the fight got made, I probably want to wipe the floor with your blue eye. He's for all laughing faces. <laughs> lad, he needs to just swear boxing now and become a full time CBD salesman. You know what I mean? That's fucking, that's where his career is headed, lad. He needs to just become a full time one of them, lad. I will be so shocked if he ever becomes a world champion. Like, yeah, no, he, 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 his level is like British. I think the British. penny with him now, to be fair, he's only talking about British and European titles. Yeah, that's now. his, that's his, that's his ceiling. So I think you know the penny I mean? might have dropped, yeah. 
that's that that is his ceiling for me, lad. And yeah. people can chat shit about me all he want, lad. But if I seen him in person, lad, I'd say it to his face. Yeah, of course, and he man. wouldn't bat an eyelid because he's a mushroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? But here, uh, yeah, let's move on from him and uh, talk about your next fight, lad. Obviously, as you say, it's gonna be um, this isn't gonna go out for another week, yeah. lad. So it's getting announced today, isn't it? Yeah, we're waiting on announcement now. So obviously, that's what I mean. Touching before, you know, everything that's the reason. And, and my next one is is uh, you know like a bucket list site one. I'm fighting Madison Square yeah. Garden. New York, and that that's one place I haven't fought. One no, place what I've got. every fighter wants to fight is, that yeah. in, in, no matter in what. In boxing, it's like you know, it's the MGM Vegas or whatever, or or the you know, Madison Square Garden is is the most historical one. So that one now, I topped the bill Vegas. Um, I've done I've done Vegas, Arizona, Texas, and now New York. So I think, I think you know, for every fighter, I think that's yeah, they are something like else, the only other one yeah. that you've got really is the fucking Staples yeah. Center or something in it. Literally, know, yeah. that's it. That's it the is. only so, other one. I just think now that that just takes something off, off the bucket list that wow well, I've fought at Madison Square Garden I, I, I call him as to be fair but you know from, he, he hasn't fought Vegas I've fought Vegas I've yeah. fought, this is just the last one and I just think oh, you know what it's fucking something else that's so every yeah, I, I, I went, went to the, the, the UFC in November there lad yeah. and it is it's yeah, fucking, fucking unbelievable, it's unbelievable you know, New York, New York there, has a place it's an unbelievable place and you know to box there like I say the pinnacle that's the pinnacle of boxing so to box there on the show I'm going to be boxing on as well, Katie Taylor and Serrano, you know. Yeah, it's like the proper unification of the, is, the, yeah. main, the, it, the main it, two bears, the aren't two, they? Yeah, like, the, the best and, and, you know, the Irish population in, in New York for Taylor is going to be massive. Yeah. I've seen that last time. She boxed there last time when yeah. Colin boxed. And um, Serrano And the from Irish New York. love the Scousers, love. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So I know how to be. I'm just expecting a good reception and obviously he's, he's from Vegas, Vargas, so... I just I'm looking forward to it and obviously chief support to that main event. Yeah, so you were meant to you were meant to fight him. Meant to fight Saturday. Yeah, it was meant it's already meant to have been, isn't it? You no, meant no, to, this Saturday. Oh, this meant Saturday, to be, yeah, it was meant, meant, meant to be to... this Saturday and then he pulled out with COVID. Then we were looking for a date in March and I said to be fair to him. I just said, look, April 30, Madison Square Garden. So as much as I don't want to wait that long till April. Because it's MSG yeah, and it's fucking, you're just going to do it, it, isn't it? Yeah, and then, so I've just had, I had last week off training, I'm going to have this week off. I've, I've still, I've done strength and conditioning this morning, I'm just going to do my strength sessions, but yeah. after boxing sessions off for another week and then, you know, Obviously, I'll have you said, you've got a little, little baby, lad. Yeah, Obviously, no, you want to spend exactly. time with your kids before yeah. you get back right into camp, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm like that with food. <laughs> I want to spend loads of time with food before I yeah. get into fight camp properly, lad. So yeah. I blew it up like a fat fuck. <laughs> like I just want to spend all time with food, lad. Like yeah. that's that's one for me to be honest. MSG, lad. Or like the, the UFC now we're doing shows there like three times a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in the next two years, I want to have fought in MSG. With the UFC, you'll get you'll get a chance to like travel. You know yeah. what I mean? You'll Defo, get a chance that's, to that's what I'm hoping, lad. Uh, like obviously with this next one being in London. I reckon before the end of the year, I'm definitely going to fight in the States again. And lad, I, I want to fight on Fight Island, Did, lad. I was going to say, the Fight Island. Molly fought Vegas one in Chester. Molly's, Molly's fought Vegas and Fight Island. She she's fight fought both, lad. Yeah, she? yeah. She's fought, she, she lost on Fight Island, yeah. but she's fought in Vegas yeah. as well. Molly's fought in Boston as well. Yeah. Molly said Boston's one of the best places she's fought. Yeah. That's some, um, that's some place that institute. The UFC in Vegas. Oh, lad, it's unbelievable. Have you been in there? Yeah, yeah so we, I, that's lad. when I boxed there. Um, I, I, I'd done me training for the fight weekend there and like, yeah. done me weight cuts lad, and that in there. It's unbelievable, yeah, isn't it, lad? Like, when I was in there, I was just like, yeah. no I was wonder thinking, people, no, what, lad, I, people I, literally moved their camp I, today. I don't know, know why, mean? like, I, 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 if you can and you've got no commitment, I don't know why everyone doesn't. So then, do, do UFC, is like, you just get it for nothing? Because we're in the UFC, yeah, we can use that facility for nothing. It's mad, lad, I was getting... We were going in, training, training in the cage, uh, the, the full size cage, training in there, uh, doing all of the bits, and then literally they go, "Oh yeah, you're in for your massage now." Yeah, so what I mean, they have massages, yeah. sleep chambers, they have, like, you, yeah, fresh sleep. food, they have you, you, all your juices, your protein, floor, and then they have the fucking everything. the sauna, they the, uh, cold, the jacuzzi, the hot, yeah. and the cold yeah. thing. Lad, like, they've got everything there for you under one but roof. That, they, they, they couldn't do enough for me as well as in obviously if you used that, but when I was there, they were just like. Do you, what do you need? Do you need? Do you need a bed in the sauna? Do you need a bike in the sauna? Or do you need? Um, do you need any sweat gear? Do you need? Do you need? It was just yeah. like they couldn't do enough for me at, at the time, and obviously I didn't really have a, have, have much to lose, yeah. so I didn't really need it all. But uh, Callum was training there as well, but he, he was just training because uh, he had a fight coming up. Whereas yeah. I was just training to make weight. See, with me, lad, I didn't even with my last fight, I didn't even get that much chance to use it that much because I got fucked over getting my visa, didn't I, lad? And yeah. Uh, when I went to get me, I had my visa appointment on the Monday and was flying on the Sunday. Got my visa appointment, lad. Uh, I went in and where I'd been, Nick, with a bag of weed when I was 19. They, they denied me. 
Yeah. I was like, lad, when have I you had that sorted or Yeah, no? I've, had, I've got my visa and yeah. that now sorted till 2023. But lad, when that lad did hit me like yeah. a ton of bricks, I went home. I was crying on the train home on the phone to my yeah, dad. Got home and sat in my house and cried and asked for like fucking two hours. Just like, I was on the verge of going to get a KFC, lad. <laughs> like, I, I didn't even yeah. have much weight to lose, but I was like, I'm that stressed. Feel like going and have it, going yeah. and having a KFC and fucking yeah. just eating shit. And like two days later, I got a message back saying it's looking like I could get sorted. And I thought, yes, I'm going. Then lad, they got back on. The f- my passport never come back to Friday. And it was Creamfields weekend. So yeah. I couldn't get my passport till the Tuesday. So yeah. when I got there Tuesday night, I only woke up in Vegas on the Wednesday morning and then fought on the Saturday. So, so I had the exact same with for the Mungia fight when I fought in Vegas. People got asked today, there's a, there's a, for a fella in the gym, he's just a boxing fanatic. You ask him a question, he'll, he'll, he'll give you the answer. But he was like, Liam, why uh, wouldn't you just, you know, if you had that chance again, would you pay and go earlier? I said, Stu, it was not about money. Yeah. It was the embassy had my passport. Now, if, if I knew that was going to happen, I probably would have, you know, I probably would have risked just going there with no visa and yeah. fighting. It was, would have been, you know, I'd have probably got nicked because it yeah, was you top do, of you the just bill. Get, yeah, you just you know what I mean? Later, right so, there. but, you know, I probably would have done that. Now, I was meant to go. It happened with Canelo, but I got there on the Sunday for Canelo on 14th Saturday. For Mungia, yeah, I got, I, fl- I left Tuesday, got, got there Tuesday, Basically, Same Wednesday man. the press thing I had to make weight, make weight Thursday, and then box Saturday. Lad. And Vegas time difference is different. Mate. Yeah. It's not like you're just going a couple lad, of hours. It's mad that that it's sounds exactly like man, lad. Because I had to fly the Tuesday morning, and lad, I had to fly to Atlanta, and yeah. then I'd go from Atlanta to fucking to Vegas. I was travelling, and I had to fly f- from Heathrow because of COVID. Yeah, to Thingyo. So because of that, I had to fly from Manny. I mean, I had to get me bed to drive me to Heathrow. And then and then get yeah. on a flight and then I was sitting in Ethiopia for like I mean. four it hours. Of, it was out of my hands and that's where that's what people. That's like, I, I really say get. the same to people. Have a passport yeah. to fly. People don't understand yeah. like no lad, you can't go without yeah. the visa. Yeah. Like I couldn't I couldn't get there without it. So yeah. like the way people say, oh, did you acclimatize? I'm like, no, no yeah, I was only there for three days, yeah, so I didn't couldn't. get to acclimatize. Yeah. Literally yeah. every morning I was like I was going to bed about fucking. I was waking up every morning at like six. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every morning, yeah, just yeah. like, what? Just sitting there, too, watching the really? sunrise out the window in the old cell, just like sitting there playing Good. footy manager, lad, <laughs> watching the sunrise, <laughs> watching all stupid shit on yeah, the telly. It is fucking mad. Like, people don't understand all that side of the shit, lad. Like, the technicalities we have to go through to even get in other countries to fight, lad. Yeah. People just think, oh, you just yeah. turn up and you're like, yeah, man, sad. Right, badly. I've had the same conversation. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> man. Like, one of the lads who fights in the UFC, a Welsh lad, Jack Shaw, he, um, he's under the same management and that. Like, he went, like, a week before. Yeah. You know what I mean? He went, like, a week before in that Vegas fight to the climatise. Molly and Paul and that flew on the Sunday. I was meant to go with them, but obviously because yeah, I never couldn't. got my passport, I had to go on my own on the Tuesday. Oh. But for me, lad, in the long run, I think that was better because I fought on... We fought on English time, didn't we? Oh, yeah, you Because yeah. it was on English yeah. prime time. Yeah. I fought at one in the afternoon. Yeah. So there, so like I woke up that morning at like six, half six, and I was yeah, I was primed, right. ready to yeah, go, lad. By by life, one, yeah. it was perfect. Yeah. And it also helped me, lad, because as I say, lad, I'm a fat cunt. Even on fight day, <laughs> I can't help myself, lad. I just yeah. eat shit. So because I was fighting at one, I didn't have that big time period yeah, to, to eat pure shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've done it before, lad. When that there's a fight there, and everyone the where, where they spew up, up, lad. Yeah, that it, was because yeah. I had a hot chocolate and Ferrero Rocher on the way to the venue, lad. You know what I mean? Crazy, that. Lad, I'm just an absolute spaceman. Where <laughs> I've been, lad, I am, lad. Where I've been doing it since I was that young. Yeah. Like, the way you said before about like, him moaning about the weight, I, like, when boxers moan about the weight compared to us, lad, it's like, yeah. mad. Like, I cut 19 pounds overnight for that. Yeah. I woke up the Monday morning, 78 kilo, and weighed in on the Friday, 66. Yeah, and I done long, 8 yeah. key overnight. 7.7 key or 8 key overnight it was. Oh, and lad. That, yeah. It's a yeah, proper weight cut, yeah. That's proper what I mean. people, disgusting. People don't know. People don't understand me, yeah. that side of the game that we go through. No, like, they, I know. Like I, I mean, if you box, put it, your box bad and all, you lo- you lose and you, you know, you could have fucking... You could have had flu Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and spewed your ring up. No one cares. No one That's cares, just a bad yeah. sport winning. No one's no, asked. No one's you asked, lad. Exactly. No one cares if you've been sick the week of the fight, if yeah. you've cut a certain amount of weight. No one cares if someone in your family's died like yeah. that week. They just turn they up, just, watch you fight. They just watch the you yeah. fight. That's all they see. They don't see the sacrifices behind it. That's why like, it's, I made up, I've started doing vlogs because yeah. people like actually see, see the behind the scenes through. shit, you yeah. know what I mean? They see what yeah. you're going through week in, week out. Yeah. Like I get pure stick online, mate, oh, he's a fat cunt, he's this, he's that. But I've like, always thought comes... stuff like that though, you know, I've always thought I'd love someone to video one of, like, one of my weight cuts. 
But then I was thinking, I couldn't let no one video it. And I, for, for two reasons. One, I wouldn't want people to kind of see. And two, like, I wouldn't want people to see fucking nine times out of ten, my head falls off. And like, I think if you got into telling you to get that camera away from me, I'm, you know, I'm sitting there sweaty. Yeah, on. lad, the, the mood that you yeah. could get you in. You know what I mean? So I just think, like, who's fighting week, lad? Like, video that. You can't say certain things to me and Molly fight week because yeah. we'll bite your fucking head off. Yeah. And you go, ah, fucking shut up, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. people don't understand that side of it, lad. People are like, oh, you've got the best job in the world, lad. Yeah. Like, lad, have you seen the yeah, fucking of dark side of it? Yeah. You wouldn't think it was the best job in the world. You just see us getting our hand raised in, in, in the cage or the ring yeah. and people just think, yeah, that's it. That's fucking, yeah. that's the, that's the be-all end up. I had one of my, no, one of my closest yeah, mates, yeah. fan to me. He, so he'd come with us and, um, just before I had to go and make weight, so it was like the Thursday night, uh, Thursday day, and obviously I knew, just like chilling until we go in the gym Thursday yeah. night, and I'm lying on the bench, but as, as you are, like, yeah, you're fucked, fuck. they've got no energy in you I'm at lying all. down, but my head's under this table, and he's the other side of a, you know, a, a thing, and he just farts, and I just sit up and say, crack, are you fucking joking? <laughs> and he went, sorry kids, I went, my fucking head stand there. Goes, just gets round, the lift goes up my room. It's proper spat me dummy out. And then like, <laughs> later on, later on, laughing about it. And then he done it again. <laughs> and I just said, are you fuck, what are you doing? And he went, it doesn't smell. I said, how the fuck do you know it doesn't smell? You you don't fart knowing it's not going to smell. You don't like, know, you don't know, fart knowing it's not going to smell. Just so simple. And I put proper bit to it. And like, obviously once, 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 I death and all that after the weigh-in and all, you're all like, You've had your fluids back in, yeah. He was laughing, saying, F like, fucking you the other day. Yeah. I'm going around me farting. It's the knob, but it's bad crack. I'm no, but at the same time, yeah. you felt like fucking him. Because yeah, he he's just fucking done your head No, but it's just that, that's... Like, lad, I think I've done something similar to Molly in the past, lad, where, like, she's been drinking a Diet Pepsi, and I'm like, oh, it's yeah. for nonsense, that. And she's yeah. fucking like, wow, fuck off, I told yeah. I can't drink. That's the end the worst. That's the end the nicest lad you'll ever meet in your life, but when he's making weight, he's the, he's the horriblest lad you've ever met in your life. Yeah. Honestly, we made stab one time, just got in the sauna talking to him and um, he just moves a towel off his face and says stop talking to me he said Liam's there talk to him he can't be asked talking to you bang puts a towel off his face and I thought oh I said sorry Bill <laughs> and he bit his mean? head yeah. off he's just like lad yeah. sorry about that it's just he's like, stop talking oh, he's fighting I weren't fighting but I've, I'm just sitting with him and he's like Stop talking to me, sir. Liam's there. Talk to Liam. I can't be asked talking to you. Put the thing back over his face and I just thought, oh. The mad thing about it is, lad, no one else will understand yeah, that apart from be, fighters. You yeah. know what yeah, I mean? No one is, else yeah. will ever understand it because they don't put the body through that, no. that sort of shit. You just think you're exaggerating, don't you? Yeah, everyone thinks, oh, you've only been yeah. on a little diet, yeah. lad. I don't course, do a little yeah. diet. I'm a fat cunt, yeah. lad. I go up to 90 kilo yeah. and get down to 70. You yeah, know what I mean? It's a lot of it. Like, I, I put pure weight on because I go out and eat three main meals and have two desserts, lad, four nights a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like after a fight, lad, I am the worst. I will yeah. go out for a scram with my bed every night. And I mean, I'll get at least two main meals. Yeah. Like we went to Cornwall, lad, after my last fight. Went to Cornwall with the dog. And lad, we went to this Thai gaff one night and other gaffs were doing the same. And we ordered five main meals between us after three starters. Yeah. And I nailed most of it. My, my bed hates me like when after the... Like, my bed's got a big that. appetite now because yeah. of me. Yeah. No, because I eat that much. Yeah, my bed's half too. like... Yeah. Oh, and she tries everything now. Yeah. So now she's like, oh, I'm like this because of you. Yeah, and I'm like, you yeah, haven't got an ounce of fat on you. What are you on about? <laughs> I was like, oh, same I'm fat. What are you on about? You haven't got an ounce of fat yeah. on yet. I'm like, lad, when I put weight on, like, yeah, my face goes like that. Me st I don't even get a big gut, lad. Yeah. Like, gut well, I, I don't, I always still have abs, bro. I just have big fat. Yeah, I always, me. like, if I lie down, I've always yeah. got abs, even yeah. when I'm, like, at me chubbiest. But yeah. it's me face, lad. Yeah. Like, me face <laughs> goes Massive. like that, lad. Yeah. And the amount of stick I've got on the internet over the past few months, lad. Now, obviously, since I've signed with the UFC. Obviously, on Cage Warriors, lad. There wasn't not as much spotlight on yeah. you. Oh, and after me, like, especially when I turned up at that UFC and MSG or all the pit stains and that like that, <laughs> everyone was like, lad, he's that sweaty because he's a fat bastard. And we were just like, fucking yeah, hell. Stand, stood on lad, the all stair. people making fucking memes, lad, of Peter, uh, Chris Griffin and fucking all <laughs> shit like that. Like, yeah, look at that one there. Right there, like I swear. Uh, okay. It's crazy. The difference in my body is crazy, but that's literally a week. Yeah. That's a week, lad. I weigh in looking like that on the right. And by the Friday later, I look like that. Because I can eat eight well, chocolate was, bars yeah. at once and yeah. dip them in Nutella as I'm eating them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's mad, after this fight, lad, I am going to have to try and be a bit more professional, lad. I need to. It's like, it, it's. <laughs> lad, look at that one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my face, lad. It's just <laughs> mad, lad, how much the weight goes to my face. Like, it doesn't go anywhere oh, else. Hell. It's mad, lad. It's hilarious, that. 
it's next <laughs> level and it does me head in like even you and your are out of shape yeah. though you don't look like no, that no, you know what I mean big, like you know? he, he, he does yeah. never look like that no, most people I don't I'm that. just a weirdo it's mad how much it goes on me face like that pisses me off to be <laughs> honest but um, yeah lad so your next fight but um, tell everyone about it lad just before yeah, we finish yeah the Madison Square Garden so it's a, just a, like a proud moment for me to be on a selfish season but it's a fight that I've wanted now for two years with Vargas. He's a two-weight world champion. He's trying to be a three-weight world champion, obviously. I'm, I'm kind of here to fucking stop it. Yeah, to stop that, to fucking... I think beat him. We're just both being former world champions and we both got decent rankings now. I beat him. I think I'll definitely fight for a world, world title next. Fight. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I want before the finish. Just a, another shot and see if I've still got, still, still got a chance left in me. Hopefully that one's in the staples sense, yeah, lad. So you got them all ticked everything. off the bucket yeah, list, definitely. lad. You're flying. Yeah, definitely. don't before we finish, lad. Any sponsors or anyone you want to give a shout to, lad? No, just mean? obviously all, 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 all the support I've had. Obviously, I, I, I appreciate it all. And, you know, MTK have backed me for eight, nine years now. So obviously, thanks for everything they've done for me. And, you know, roll on New York. New York, New York. My man's coming to take someone's head clean off before he gets a new world title. Can't wait to see it, lad. Going to be sick watching that, lad. Absolutely brilliant. Hopefully, I'm getting another fight around that time in America, yeah, lad. I fucking hope so. But, uh, yeah, that's it for, uh, for today, everyone. Again, shout out to Flux. New gear's coming out soon. But um, that's it. That's a wrap. See you next week.